Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this video, we will talk about adding the Ubiquiti Security Gateway to your smart home network. And trust me, you're going to want to see this one. This video is also available as an Amazon Flash Briefing or Podcast. Please go to techbyteswithronnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this video, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on the like button, which is thumbs up. Now here's what we're going to cover. First, we're going to show you some things that you may not have readily found. Now, you don't want to necessarily insert this into a production network. So what I'm in the process of doing is moving from my original network over to the one with the Ubiquiti uh, Security Gateway on it, which is where the Unify controller is already on, and that's the one where the Unify or Ubiquiti AP is already on. And that way I can gradually move things over now, by default, the Ubiquiti Security Gateway is going to have a default address. And actually, let me get over to here. I was on the wrong screen. Not the first time this has ever happened. But it's going to have... Whoops. Okay, here we go. And I thought I'd pressed all the buttons. By default, it's going to use a different IP address. It's going to use 192.168.1.0 slash 24 or 255 255.0. Now that may or may not fit in with your existing IP address scheme. If it doesn't, not a problem. I'm going to show you how to deal with it. And trust me, this is easy. So what we'll do is we'll go over here. And I've already got a session up and running. Now, full disclosure, I've already got this into my network. And I really didn't want to go taking it out at this point. So... What you can do is you can take your laptop and plug it into the LAN port of the security gateway and power up both of them. And then your laptop should get a 192.168.1. whatever address. Go into do HTTPS colon 192.168.1.1 and it should automatically revert to login. You might have to go to login and then you will enter your credentials. Now, if you say, but hold it, there wasn't any included. Well, this is the Ubiquiti default. And it's going to be UBNT for the username and UBNT for password. Now, be careful when you get this uh, adopted into your Ubiquiti or your Unify uh, controller. It's going to change the passwording, but I'll sh we'll, we'll see where you get that changed. So at this point, I will go ahead and put in the new credentials that this has already got on it. And we'll press enter. And it's going to take it just a little bit to come back here. Now, what we'll do is we will go to configuration. And this is where you will change it. You go down here to land settings. You will go to 10.0. You, you, this, if this is where it'll show 192.168.1.1. Change that to, in my case, I'm using 10.0.1 slash 24. So it'd be 10.0.1.1. And you can make the default go, the Ubiquiti safe, uh, Security Gateway anything you want it to be. I just did dot one. And I've got the DHCP server turned on. So once you click on Apply Changes, you're going to lose your contact with the security gateway then what you will do is reestablish it because it's going to take it a, a little bit to recycle uh, maybe a couple of minutes and then your laptop is going to have to get a new address once you do that you're ready to get started so at that point what you will do is you will adopt it. You should see a message come up that says you need to adopt the device. And if you go under, and let me, I'm, I'm dealing with a little bit smaller screen here. If we go down to devices, you will see uh, adoptable or something other than, you know, what you're seeing these two devices. Then you will just adopt it, give it a couple of minutes, and it's going to download all its configuration. Now, I'm going to go over here in just a moment. I've got to drop 
the lower third because you're not going to be able to see some things, nor will I for that matter. And then what you will do is we'll go down here. We want to, we don't want to try the new settings. We'll go to networks. Now this is, I'm sorry, you'll need to stop here for just a moment. Do this before you put the security gateway in because it's going to adopt the address range that the Unify controller has already gotten. So what we have to go in through here is go into the LAN settings and change this setting to your new gateway, which is a 10.0.1.1. Your network gateway may, it's going to have to be changed. It'll be 255. So you'll have 254 addresses and it will show you your complete range. You'll need to do this before you do going through and doing the adoption process. Sorry, I kind of got the cart before the horse on that one. Once you do that, and then we'll go back up here to devices and we'll double click on that and I've got to close something out on this screen otherwise I can't see the settings and actually we'll move my ugly picture over here to the other side so what we'll go through and do here is we will click on oh here we go i was clicking too high we click on settings and then manage device and we can go down and forget the device uh, we can force provision which is good forget the device we don't want to and i will have to find the setting and put that in the in the notes because I did find it once before it wasn't the most intuitive thing and if we go here okay configure interfaces now this is not working for you but basically if you don't change the IP address you're gonna be in a situation that you can no longer uh, SSH to the device not that you really should have to but I'm always one for loving to have a, a backup plan Anyway, so let's go back over here. So once you've got it up and running and your map initially is going to look a little disjointed because it's going to see the devices plugged in. And there's three interfaces on this thing. There's WAN, LAN 1, LAN 2. Normally, you're only going to need to use WAN, which will plug into your internet connection. And then LAN will plug into the network you've got in the house and like i said i've kept mine totally separate for right now as i'm slowly migrating devices over because i want to take the opportunity while i'm moving things over to do that now to to basically clean up some of the devices now what i did is i set up a separate ssid in my case lwap u for ubiquity and the devices i'm moving over i move to the new ssid if I'm bringing over a bunch of devices in mass and I'm sure that everything is fine. I'll shut down the other access point and add, in my case, LWAP-A and LWAP-B as SSIDs on the Ubiquiti AP. And then things should transparently move over assuming you keep the same passphrases. So this is why these are a little disjointed because the safety, the security gateway doesn't necessarily see that this is connected directly to it when it is, but for what it can do, and let me move the picture out of the way here because I've got to find a way to control. Okay, there we go. I, I wasn't able to see all the devices. So you can see the devices that are plugged in are connected through the access point and the ones that are hardwired in so this is where you can really start to see the power because if you want to see what what a device is doing then you can go down here to clients and it will show you everything that's there it will show you wireless wired and we can go through and do things such as 
if we drill in, well, we'll pick on our, our, on our Pyware. And if we go down to statistics and show historical data, okay, it's not there. Okay, deep packet inspection. This is, ah, here we go. And then details. Deep packet inspection and details is where you want to go. This is where it really tells you what's going on with the device. And for some reason, my uh, Roku is not showing up on here. But this really allows you to, to drill down and you can see what is, is going on. So it can go system stats and that shows you an overview of what's going on and it's really interesting this is where i actually have had this up and running for about well about a week to two almost two weeks really and this has been you what you start to see is this is where the security gateway comes in because it's more than just a firewall it is so versatile and it, it's going to take time to really go through and show you everything but once you do that then you'll start seeing clients come in. We'll see the uh, Unify. We'll bring up the Unify controller and we will go to Deep Packet Inspection and we'll go down here to Details. And this is then where you start seeing the protocols. And at this point with the security, with, the, with Unify, it's not showing you that much. It's going to do DNS. It's going to have TLS because that's how we're talking to it. It's going to see HTTP over TTS SSL, and it's got something it can't identify. Now, when I'm looking at the streaming receiver, oh, does it ever give you the details. So this is very handy to see exactly what is traversing your network. And this is something that's going to take time. Like as You can look at the devices, which is going to be the physical hardware, and then you can look at the clients, which are the devices on your network. And these icons you see are ones that it can either automatically assign if it fingerprints it the right way, or you can manually add them as, as they get discovered. So you can pick out something that's, that's very representative of, the, of what it, does now this is just what's showing you at a at an overall network level and this is what really makes it interesting because if even if you're not an it person knowing what's going on in your network can sometimes help you spot when there's a problem now we can go through and look at things this is where we can add wireless right now i got just the lwap uh ussid on the network so we've got those two ranges in there routing and firewall okay nothing's really there threat management and these are going to be all things that as i turn more and more of the features up we're going to see what what it's capable of doing now guest control this is something i'm already looking at doing another video for so that when you have friends come over you can make this a fairly secure situation in that your friends coming over are not going to see your network unless you want them to. If you're doing some sort of multiplayer game, then, then you're going to kind of have to. So we can see there's services that get radius. I mean, this thing really is can be used by more than just a home situation. You can see the different code versions that are available or are installed, remote access, and see that by is turned on by default. So you can actually get to this from the outside and look at what changes are going on but you may want to turn that off there are things such as where you can have the back config backed up every day so really that is something that is very handy to do and i know this is just a high level overview but really once you adopt the security gateway into your network there you need to let it sit for a few days because it's more than just a firewall it is it is almost like a network sniffer, but on a very different level because it will tell you what's going on, shows you how your bandwidth utilization is being distributed by the different devices. And if it sees a problem, this is going to give you a good indication right here 
what is going on because we're at the main screen. It says everything is great, 99%. I've never seen it be 100%. I'm sure it's possible. But that's what you're seeing at this point. And it may drop down a little bit. Again, if it drops down, I've had it drop down as low as about 75%. Don't be concerned. Sometimes it's just a matter of when it's taking the snapshot for it to work. So this is just an overview. We're, we're going to be doing some other things like you're setting up a guest portal so that when your friends come over, they can get internet access, but yet you're protecting your network from either a, a rogue app on their phone or if somebody thinks they want to be cute and change some passwords on you, you're going to pretty much have them locked out of your network, which I don't care how good a friend somebody is to you, you have to consider that something may happen that you don't want to happen and they may have a twisted sense of humor and ultimately you have to protect yourself. And especially if you're doing a work from home situation, you've got to protect what's going on. So th we're going to be delving more into this in, in coming videos, but this is where you really get to see the power of the Unify controller that we set up in the last video when we got things up and running. So come to me with any questions you've got. We're going to really kick the tires on this thing and see what else we can get it to tell us. And then we'll go from there. We, we are going to be adding yet another device we're going to be adding the ubiquity switch i wanted to do a whole ubiquity solution just to really get us a chance for, to see what it can do plus that way when i go to move the ap to its final position i don't have to worry about getting power and all that i can just hook it in to the ubiquity switch but that as i say is a subject for another video so that brings us to where we are for this point this was just kind of a, a introduction video to what you could see with the security gateway and what to do you're going to see other videos to the right or my left on other ones in the same series that you'll want to watch or to content that i've produced of the smart home variety if this video helps you or provides value please click on the button which is thumbs up if you haven't already subscribed to the channel please click on subscribe and enable notifications and we'll see you in the next video